Hi everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the Market Now as about noon Eastern on Friday, January 11th. Well, a five-day rally in stocks may be running out of steam so far today as investors book profits ahead of the earnings season set to begin next week. At the end of a solid week that lifted the S&P 500 10% from its 20-month lows hit around Christmas, all the 11 major S&P indexes are trading a little bit lower. Big banks will kick off the fourth quarter earnings season next week, and investors will keenly look for signs of a slowdown in economic growth, a concern that led to a sell-off in stocks in the final quarter of 2018, as we well know, right? So on that note, let's go on and look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. Now, as we usually do, we're going to first look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 index. I use the SPY because we can see volume on it down at the bottom of the chart, and volume sometimes can tell a story. Now, we don't see volume on the S&P index itself because indexes are not traded. Just derivatives of these indexes are traded, like this ETF. So now let's look at this chart. We know that the SPY melted, to down, melted down to lows of $234.27 on the close on Christmas Eve day. That was a big fall. It was a little nerve-wracking. However, when the market opened on December 26, the SPY held that level of 234 and then proceeded to rally and has been rallying up more or less ever since. A very nice return. As I just said, um, we've had about a 10% uh, gain off Christmas Eve lows. Now, the SPY when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $258.09, or about $25.80 on the S&P 500 itself. So uh, it has also established a little bit of support down here, right around two, <clears throat> 243, 244. Uh, and of course, now we have resistance up here at about 260 which would be 2,600 on the S&P 500. And we know that if we drew this line and kept drawing it left on our chart, that this would hit these lows right here established uh, in October and in December. So what was support has now become resistance at this 260 or 2,600 level on the S&P. Now, as you know, the definition of an uptrend, we're still on that, is price moving in a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. And that means we're getting a little toppy here maybe if the market pulls back in the coming week in order to remain positive, it needs to stay above the low certainly at 234 and it looks like that probably could happen. I'd be nice if it stays above these lows at about 243, 244 here. But uh, again, to, to stay in an uptrend, we need higher lows and higher highs. Now, the market certainly looks positive at the moment, and volatility is abating slightly. Thank goodness. However, I believe the market is still nervous. We can verify that by noting that the VIX today remains at about 19, uh, and when it's at 20, we know there is a good bit of fear in the market. So currently, I am continuing because we have kind of a toppy look here, at least in the very short term. I'm continuing my defensive strategy of entering new positions still with small share size and always firm stops. So we'll see in the coming week where the SPY goes, especially as we start moving through earnings season. Now, the next chart we're going to look at today, we haven't looked at in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. This is the iShares Russell 2000 Exchange Traded Fund, the IWM. Now, as I've told you before in Tony's Market Club, we watch the IWM, which is, it contains small caps. That's companies valued at about $300 million to about $2 billion. The uh, small caps can act as a leading indicator for the rest of the market, for the broad market. Now... Uh, so actually, because of what's happened, this is good news. 
We know that the IWM made an all-time closing high up here on August 31st at $173.02. Since then, this particular ETF or index has fallen very, very dramatically, diving to a low on December 24th, a closing low of $125.84, which was 27% below its August 31st high and definitely in bear market territory. Uh, thank goodness it held that low and then rallied dramatically. This has been a nice bullish, kind of a bullish signal here for the broader market when the small caps rally as, as, as well as they have, or it has, I guess I should say. Uh, when I captured this chart today, the IWM was trading at $142.84. Now in the very short term, because it's climbed so much so far, uh, I'm going to say that it maybe looks a little toppy here. It's also finding resistance up here from the 50-day moving average, which is coming in at $144.65. So we can say we have pretty strong resistance here at $145. We also see price resistance uh, from, the per, per, from the moves in December, the very first part of December. All this year, uh, all the people who bought here could potentially be saying, you know what, if this thing ever gets back up to where I buy it, I'm going to sell it and get out even. So I suspect there's a little bit of supply going to come on the market here. And we could see, we might, can't know for sure, of course, we might see a little pullback here in the coming week. Still, if the IWM can hold support here above one, maybe above the 20-day moving average at 136, certainly down here at 133, 135, right in here, if the IWM can hold support there and then continue higher and, and eventually move back up over the 50-day moving average, again, that will be very bullish for the market and certainly bullish for the small cap arena. So keep an eye on the IWM for further developments. So far, so good. But of course, we can never become too sanguine about the market. Our final chart here are, is a chart we haven't looked at in a long time. This is a daily chart of the Van Eck Vector Semiconductor ETF, the SMH. The SMH has 25 holdings. The top holdings are Intel, Taiwan Semiconductor, Broadcom, Texas Instruments, and NVIDIA. So this is one way, if, if some of these stocks are too volatile for you, if you get into the exchange-traded fund, and this is true in any sector, you can own stocks like NVIDIA that, are, that can be pretty wild and pretty volatile. You can own them in a fund, and that, of course, lowers risk because there are 25 components, not just one. So it may be something you want to look at. Now, in March of... Uh, in March uh, of this year, and you can just barely see it on this chart on the far left, the uh, SMH made a 52-week high at $114.45. Excuse me, 114 then, as we can see, it made a series of lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and it actually made a wedge or a triangle formation here. And we know that when these formations, when, the, when we get lower highs and higher lows here in a sideways movement, this can actually, if broken, turn in, and by broken I mean price falling below this lower trend line, it can be a negative connotation uh, for the particular asset we're looking at. And in this case, the SMH got very negative. Uh, it fell to December 24th lows down here at $80.88. That's a 29% drop from these March highs, so darn near 30% drop. Now, since then, and of course this has a lot to do with China and the tariffs and so forth, semiconductors always do, uh, and, and uh, Apple stock and so forth, that we know everything that's happened there. Uh, so it's gotten a little rocky start here, but maybe it's a, it became oversold here. It has rallied since these December 24th lows. It's rallied pretty strongly. I like the fact that it pulled back because that gets some of the air out of it and then started up again. <clears throat> now, what it has done is it's penetrated so far. Today when I captured this chart, 
the SMH was trading at $91.11. It's penetrated some of this resistance back here that uh, I thought might come into play a little more strongly than it did. So the buyers, are, at the moment anyway, the buyers are certainly doing, uh, are stronger than the sellers. And the SMH is, is, is now fighting, duking it out with price resistance and with the 50-day moving average, which is coming in at $91.27. Now, the 50-day is starting to move horizontally. That gives it less strength as a resistance ceiling uh, than if it were still moving down. So it's just possible, if we get some good news in the coming week, that the SMH could move higher. Now, in the SMH, in the coming week, I would definitely like to see the SMH pull back to probably about 88 or maybe a little bit below it, ideally, and then bounce. That's what I'd like to see for an entry. Of course, I'm pretty sure the SMH isn't listening to me. Uh, at any rate, if the SMH can remain strong and eventually uh, climb back above the 50-day moving average, I may buy a small position to start with, with an initial stop at $87, a pretty tight stop, and then trail that stop under price if the SMH continues to rally higher above its 50-day moving average. And of course, at some point, if it can do that, I will turn the 50-day moving average, a close below that, into my stop. So this is something you may want to keep an eye on. Maybe it's something that appeals to you. Uh, it probably won't be a dull ride. Semiconductors are never dull. They're usually pretty exciting. So if you're a very conservative investor, um, you may want to watch and see if this is something that um, appeals to you or your, and your sense of risk. And now on to the coming week's economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Monday, January 14th, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. If you're not sure how to approach the market right now, we can help. We will talk about which side, the, uh, excuse me, which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that are ripe for high potential trades, plus their entries, stops, and profit targets. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, not a problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members just a few minutes after the session ends. For more information and to join, go to tonysmarketclub.com. Now again, earnings season starts this coming week. As far as economic reports go, on Tuesday we have the producer price index. Wednesday we have retail sales our usual crude inventories, and the Fed's beige book. On Thursday, we have our usual jobless claims, building permits and housing starts, and the Philly Fed Index. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this terrific opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now. Thank you.